Hello friends, neighbors, John your neighbor here. Welcome down the nook and welcome to another Journey's End review. That means I've got a bunch of empty bottles here and I am going to share just final thoughts. Basically, am I gonna buy them again, am I not? And a couple of quick tasting notes or if they've changed for me as they've been on the shelf, poured out, poured out with friends, that kind of thing. I got this idea from Roy at Aquavite. He's the classic. Uh, I should go over there and, and check out his recycled reviews. They're high caliber, far better than mine. But I like this idea. Like now that the bottle's been around, now that I've had it with maybe different foods or maybe I've had it with a friend or so, has it changed? And, you know, would I buy it again? So buckle up. I'm going to try to get through 18 whiskeys in hopefully under 20 minutes. Three, four. Okay, let's start with some bourbon. I've got uh, a few bourbons down here. One of them is this Jim Beam single barrel, but the, the new style or the new release. And again, I'm totally jealous at how cheap it is in the US, uh, but up here it's still, you know, not a bad value, but this, you know, 108 proof, 54% uh, isn't any good. And I I liked it. You know, it's it's got a little bit of Jim Beam nuttiness. It's sweet and spicy, a little bit bitter. It's not phenomenal, um, but, for me, you know, it's a good value. And I'm sure, while I'm not running to get this again, I'm pretty sure I will buy another Jim Beam single barrel. Oh, I'm gonna go to, I know, a favorite of many of you. This is Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Now, I like Woodford Reserve, and I do like this Double Oak, but online, it's got a lot of fans. Uh, you know, uh, burnt sweet campfire marshmallow, a little bit of chocolates in there, some nice spicing, and I do find it sweeter than their regular. Um, and sweet oak here, of course, it's double oak, so it's got that backbone of oak and it's got a little higher sugars. As I was saying, maybe toasted marshmallow. So this is good. It, it, is, a, it is a good bourbon and certainly a good example of how double oak can, can of course bring a little more bracing, tannic, some, some oak notes, but usually a double oak will bring something else secondary, depending on whether it's extra charred or whatever. And this time, for me, it brings a bit of that sweetness, that sweet oak taste to it. So it's good. It's a little overpriced for what it brings for me. And so I'm not going to be replacing this soon. And I know that hurts because there's a lot of tubers out there that this is one of their favorites. This one is a finished bourbon. So it's from Rabbit Hole Distillery. It's a uh, Derringer. This one is uh, their, their bourbon that's been finished in uh, PX Sherry casks. And as you'd expect with PH Sherry, it is sweet. This one works for me. I've been tasting more and more finished bourbons on my journey. And this one um, didn't change much, but I enjoyed it all the way through. If you're looking for a nice sweet red fruit backed in with that more cinnamon hearty, stronger bourbon note. This is a pretty good example. In fact, it's a really good example. I uh, haven't seen the price on this, so I can't talk value uh, anytime soon. I've had this open for a while, but I liked it enough that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna replace it or certainly another thing from Rabbit Hole. I like their four grain mash bill. I like what they're doing. So we've got some American whiskeys here. This one is Jack Daniels Triple Mash. So, uh, you know, this has got their regular uh, Tennessee whiskey, but then it's also got some malt. And I think, does it have some rye? I'm trying to remember what the, th what the three in here now. I should, of course, know that. Um, yeah, their rye their, and, their, and their American malt. And I like this one. I like this more than the Bottled and Bond, which was a shocker last year that, that uh, um, it was voted Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate. But... For me, this was a better pick and it's still on the shelves and a good value. And 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 I think it, it gives it a little bit more malt hardiness to the regular number seven and it's certainly way more interesting for me than their, their regular release. So if I'm gonna look for a little bit more affordable Jack Daniels, I could easily see myself replacing that. I've got a American single malt uh, from Boulder, Colorado, Boulder Spirits. Uh, and this one is their port cask finish. 
I like almost everything that Boulder puts out. And and I know I'm biased because I know the fellows who've, who've brought it in and they're, and they're so passionate about the spirit. But this is a great example of American single malt. For me, it's got, you know, some of that nutty, uh, nuttiness that I get with malts, creaminess a little bit. Uh, but then it's got fresh oak. It's got, uh, you know, it's got some new oak going on in here. And then, of course, they've got this port cask. Or maybe this one was only port cask, now that I've said that. But it's got oakiness, which I associate with American single malt. And it's got some sweetness. I would actually say, now that I'm thinking about it, um, it really leaned into a sweet sour. And I think another reviewer said this, so I don't know where I'm getting it. But there was like a rhubarb sweetness. And if you're on the prairies, you know what I mean. It's got... Like that sweetness that you have in rhubarb pie, but it's got that tartness as well. Uh, and it had a little bit of that going on, which was pretty cool. I'm actually not going to buy this particular one again. I like some of the other Boulder Spirits better, uh, but this was certainly a unique ride. I think that takes me into some scotch now. So we'll, we'll go across the pond over to Scotland and uh, start with, uh, I'm going to say a classic 12-year-old uh, full sherry dram. This is from Tamdu, and and what a beautiful bottle. I just love Tamdu's bottles. I think they're very cool, very unique, and I recognize them immediately. Um, it does have natural color, aged exclusively in sherry, and um, it's probably chill filtered though at 43, which is too bad, but I like this one. It's one that I've really started to recommend a little bit more to people looking for a sherry dram, and the reason for that is, well, pricing on everything has gone up. This one has gone up less than some others, and I think it's a really nice example of a good sherried malt. Didn't change much. I liked it from Hello, and I'm sure I'll replace it. This one, uh, another one brought in from the PWS import group, uh, it's Kings Barnes. Um, this one is the, the, the Lowland uh, Balcomi, I think it was. And and uh, fun. It was a it was a fun lowland dram. Pretty good, nice flavors, good malts, but uh, but it didn't capture my interest. It was tasty, and I've seen lots of people online talk about how great it is. So I know there are fans out there. But for me, um, I mean, I do love forty six percent. I do love sherry drams lately, and so it's good. Uh, but it it. Um, what was the fruits like in the middle that I was trying to remember why I remember thinking, ah, oh, this is good, but I wanted it to be better. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch. I've, I've shot all of these full videos. This one, um, I don't think I'm going to replace again. It's a good dram and it's affordable these days, but I don't think I'm going to replace it. Oh, this one was a bit of a surprise. In fact, I haven't thought about this in a while. Uh, I just go pull my empties and then and then have to look at it now with you. Huttert by Old Pulteney. Old Pulteney um, has a really nice seaside note to it, to me, a little bit of salt air, uh, a little bit of brine. Um, the, the peat in it is is very light, uh, but it's got that, that character, that seaside character. And um, this was pretty great. It's 46, which I like. It's, it's uh, better than their, their, their 12 year old. Um, I, I, this was a good dram. I'm trying to remember during the journey on this bottle, but, but I, I would certainly recommend giving it a try. Uh, it stayed okay price wise, and it has that nice, uh, seaside, light brine, light peat, but you know, other, other good single malt characters. I, I this was a gooder for me and, and I would, I would consider buying it again. Oh, I guess I must be moving into more peats. So this is uh, Glenlivet, one of their Nadura series. This one is a peated cask. I think it was ex-bourbon only, um, you know, 61 and a half percent. I, uh, now that it, the percent just tweaked, it was a bit of a bruiser. Uh, it did have some nice, uh, like I could get some Glenlivet orchard fruits and a little bit of toffees and caramels. Like it clearly felt ex-bourbon-y. Um, but the 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 strength and the peat uh, kind of smacked you around a bit, or it did me. It, it was ashy and sooty and uh, and 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 briny. Not too briny, actually. Now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it, uh, peppery though, spicy. Uh, so it 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 was hot, even proofed down. It went from you know hot alcohol to hot spicy. That said. I had fun with this bottle. And if I see another Nadir on the shelf, I saw this one was bottled in 2015. So, you know, they're getting harder to find. Um, I probably would take a chance because I like the series. So 
if I see this exact bottle on and it's really gone up in price, I'm not buying it again. But would I try Nadura? Yeah, I would. Pretty cool series. Going into more peatland here, uh, I've got this bottle and this particular one was open for a long time. Uh, this is Ugadale by Ardbeg. And, and you know, Ugadale for me over the years has been a wonderful mix of full peat expression with sherry. So you get that barbecued meats. Um, this one's definitely earthy peat for me. And yeah, there's a bit of medicinal in there, but the Oloroso sherry notes are just on point. I really like Ugadale. Uh, you know, it's a it's a good percent. This one's 54.2. I did a comparison with the 2022, can't remember, uh, Jesse from Dribs and Dram sent me one and found this older release fruitier uh, and that one more oaky and, and spicier, but I still loved it. And I just checked before I got online because I knew that, I was like, oh shoot, like what is the prices happen for Ugadale? And, it's 108 bucks Canadian, which is, it's been kicking around 100 bucks for a long time. Now, I haven't bought one in the last couple of years, so I'm going to have to because I really like Ugadale. And for 108 bucks with Scotch prices today, I think that's a buy. Oh, and we'll end with a, a bit more value uh, Scotch here. This one is Black Bottle. Black Bottle uh, even made it on the uh, Online Scotch Whiskey Awards to be in the running for Best Blend. A lot of fans of this bottle out there. And I have to say, if you're looking for a little more smoke, a little bit more industrial, kind of slight fossil fuel note uh, with your whiskey, uh, hard to beat. It really is. Very affordable. Sits on the floor at 40%, uh, but a lot of character. I know it's got big fans out there. For me, I'm not replacing this. Uh, I'm going to go over to Irish. I don't have a lot of Irish. Right now, this is uh, Bushmills 10-year Causeway series, the one that's finished in cognac cast. It's a great Irish whiskey. Uh, it's, it's just what I expect from a classic Irish in the terms of floral and fruity, uh, light toffees, like really nice, uh, easy to enjoy. And then it's got a little more uh, character, a little more uh, musk to it because of the uh, uh, finishing in uh, cognac cask. And, and it maybe even more different style of sweetness, not just the uh, kind of the orchard fruit sweetness, which I get from a lot of Irish and honeys, but here now I can get a little bit of that red, uh, you know, red fruit sweetness. This is a great bottle, just a great bottle, and I will buy it again. Um, I've got this other one, uh, Irish Hyde. I know, uh, I think they sourced their whiskey. This one's Stout Cast finished. You know, uh, fun. Uh, it was definitely more malty, more creamy. Um, had some of those, uh, I was going to say yeasty, but that's not quite right. I'm trying to think of, of the notes that you get with uh, Stout finished whiskey. And it had those, and that was great. And 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 it's non-chill filtered. And what was the percentage on it? No, 43. That's odd. Non-chill filtered, but 43. Um but it, it, while it was fun and I, and I enjoyed it, it was easy to drink and it was creamier, a uh, little pricier and, and not a lot of depth. In fact, almost no finish. That was probably my biggest knock on this. Like it would be okay here and then you'd, you'd swallow it away and you're like, what just happened? And so that to me was enough to say, I'm not going to be buying that again. I guess that's all I have for Irish. I've got an international here. This is a Paul John Bold Edition. Paul John, uh, of course, is an Indian single malt. And uh, this one is their heavily peated, 46%. I think it's even natural non-chill filtered. I should look that up because that's what I believe about Paul John. I like Paul John releases. Uh, they're younger. They do, this one tastes a little grainy. Um, and but it's uh it's got good good peat flavors and it is affordable yes it's an on age stamp if you're looking for a heavy peat um you know this one i think i think would do it it's got a little more roasted notes to it as well at least i get that maybe that's characteristic of paul john like roasted uh walnuts kind of thing it's got a little bit of that that husk not husk going on uh and and i I have a lot of peat on my shelves right now. I don't know what that is. So I know I'm not buying it soon, but if I was looking for, you know, a tasty single malt, now it does taste young, uh, but it's flavorful. It's got both that juxtaposition going on. I'd consider buying a Paul John again. Uh, I'm gonna go over to, oh, I guess Canadian. I set these up weird. 
And then I'm gonna do some rise. I got a couple of Americans and then a Canadian right at the end. This is my only straight up just Canadian whiskey. It's Weiser's 10 year old. And uh, this one of almost all the bottles, well, no, we could all had a way more journey with, but I, I had a journey with. When I first opened it up, I was quite disappointed with this 10 year old. It was all the things in Canada, which I know have huge fans out there, very sweet, maple sugar, inoffensive whiskey, uh, but didn't have any character for me. And I thought, you know, add a few more years, like now 10 years, I, I really want some more oaking. I want some, some more finish, that kind of thing. And it got a little better. It did. It's still 40%. It's still, uh, um, you know, pretty light Canadian uh, uh, dram, but it did some of that oaking that up front was not there came in uh, whether it was because it sat open for a while or I changed it never it's hard to know how the journey is changing but this one got better for me and so if you're a fan of Canadian whiskey you like that style but you want just a little more and it's still very very affordable I'd consider buying a bottle of this if you have it it's good I it's just not what my palate is reaching for so I know I'm not going to have another bottle of this so now, as I said, I got some rye. I'm going back to American rye. I don't know why I set these up. Usually I, I go uh, Canadian and American rye stay with bourbons, but this one's a Colorado uh, release and it's unique because I think, did they finish it in Aspen cast or they have Ashman uh, staves in it? I think they put the actually pieces of Aspen wood in it. And if you are looking for, you know, the full rye, grassy, herbaceous rye, you know, yes, spices, cracked pepper, cinnamons, but I'm gonna come back to, you know, slight pine, uh, herbal note, green, green woods. Um, oh yeah, Aspen Woods Davis right on the bottle. Then this is your rye. It's a solid, I mean, look at all the bling. Clearly, it's a, clearly a good whiskey. Having said that, it got too grassy for me. It actually did. It actually got to the point where I enjoyed it right up front. I'm like, oh yeah, I know what I'm getting. And then it was okay. And the last part, I, I just didn't reach for it much because maybe maybe my palate shifted, but it was too almost bitter at the end. And so even though it's clearly a bottle of character, I'm not replacing this one. Here's a, a, an American rye. This one's a barely legal rye, Knob Creek. It's the cast strength release. Uh, it was far too pricey when it came out, but thankfully it went way down in price and I was able to get it for a steal. Um, and that made it so that I could just think of the liquid. What do I think of this rye? And I like Knob Creek rye. I know it is a little more bourbon uh, than rye. By that, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's probably 51%. I think, I think Knob Creek is a barely legal rye, 51 in the mash bill. Um, but you know, it, it's got nice cinnamons, uh, red apple flavors, uh, cracked peppers, uh, and not doesn't suffer from the from the over grassy note, and I can I can enjoy a good grassy rye, but it uh, it is it's pretty good stuff. And I this is long gone. This one was barreled in in two thousand and nine, and 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 when it comes back on the shelf in my neighborhood, I'm sure it'll be too pricey again. But this was really good. Makes me think I need to like I think it's been years since I've had even just a regular Knob Creek rye. I should put that back in rotation and and, and uh, compare it with some of my current favorite rye. So this particular bottle I'm not going to replace again, but I like Knob Creek rye. So I'm going to wrap up my whiskeys. I know I've talked long and only given some thoughts. Buy not buy with an Alberta Premium Cask release. You know these are a ton of fun. Uh, I uh, yeah they're big and bold and hot and. Uh, and everyone is slightly different. Um, this is the 63 and a half, so it's their fourth edition, and, and it it was fun. In fact, I I went through this bottle far too quickly for a 63 and a half percent rye. It is a full rye, it's an all rye. It's, uh, I think it's column and pot, but I, shoot, can't remember. They used to do their rye that way. Either way, uh, it's not old, it's not, you know, super aged, um, and but it, it still has, rye fruitiness um it's got a little bit of, of of grain but it's not nearly down a path of of of, of uh, green herbaceous notes uh, it's far a uh, little closer actually i would say to bourbon roundness and caramels and sweetness but you know at 63 and a half it's a kicker it's got lots of punch lots of spice lots of rye hug um this one gave me i think again a bit more fruit a little closer to the first one 
Uh, I found this two and three. Three wasn't bad. Two was I did was too oaky. Uh, I didn't like it that much. Um, but this fourth edition just means sure that I'm absolutely going to buy the fifth and then probably the sixth unless they absolutely tank the fifth. We'll see. Thanks for joining me here. You know, it's always fun to try to recall. And I, and I never set up, like, of course, when I put them down here, I look at them and I think, it's not that I don't think about them, but this is my thoughts as I recall trying to think of my experience, trying to think of what I did. All of these I've reviewed, all of them I have way better notes on and way better comparisons. Usually I'm trying to do it down to another whiskey than this rundown, but this is just up and done. Would I buy it or not? This one? You bet. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.